ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ತುಮರಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಾ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷೋರುಂದೇಲಿತೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಮೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಗದಾಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕಂ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋನ್ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗಜಾತ ಸಗನ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನೋ ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪಶ್ಚ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ತರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಸ್ಟರ್ಡೇ ವಿ ಸಾ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೋಪತ್ ಗೇವ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ವೇರ್ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರೋಪತ್ ಪುಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ದ ತರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಅಶ್ರದ್ಧಾನ ಪುರುಷ ಧರ್ಮ ಪರಂತ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯ ಮಾಂ ನಿವರ್ತಂತೆ ಮೃತ್ಯು ಸಂಸಾರ ವರ್ಮಣಿ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫೇತ್ಫುಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿವೋಷನಲ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಮೀ ಓ ಕಾನ್ಕರ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಮೀಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೇ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ದ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೆತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಮೆನ್ಶನಿಂಗ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫೇತ್ಫುಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಷನಲ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ದ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ಸೊ ದೇ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದರ್ ಯೋಗಾಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಯೋಗಾಸ್ ದೇ ಕೆನ್ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಸೊ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ನೋ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಎಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ವೈಕುಂಠ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ನೋ ಹೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದೇ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ದ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೆತ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ even if they get liberation by the process of jnana yoga or dhyana yoga so they have to return to the path it's like nice grammar is used here return means like i have to go out of it and then come back you know if somebody says that i have returned to bangalore so that means immediate question is uh, have you gone outside bangalore so have you gone somewhere else so in the same way so return therefore they return to the path of birth and death in this material world means these other yoga practitioners they may achieve liberation after so much of struggle they may achieve liberation but then they will have to return to the path of birth and death in this material world right so that's the problem uh, so but bhakti yoga no krishna is telling it's uh, they can attain me and they don't need to return and uh, why uh, that krishna is not telling but then we can uh, deduce from this other people will return that means like the bhakti yogi will not return and in specifically also in many other shlokas it is mentioned how bhakti yogi doesn't uh, need to return to the uh, place of birth and death again right purport the faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotion service that is the purpose of this verse faith is created by association with devotees unfortunate people even after hearing all evidences of vedic literature from great personalities still have no faith in god they are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in devotional service of the lord thus faith is a most important factor for progress in krishna consciousness in the chaitanya charitamrita it is said that faith is the complete conviction that simply by serving the supreme lord shri krishna one can achieve all perfection right hare krishna krishna hare krishna 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 so this chaitanya charit
So there is nothing else that needs to be done. So that is the uh, nature of, or that is the faith that a person should have. And this faith gradually it should increase you know, as we practice. And that's the whole thing. Our advancement is based on the increase of faith in Krishna, right? And how we will get increase of faith in Krishna? More our senses, mind, and intelligence become purified, you know, from material contamination. Then the knowledge arises, the faith arises, the happiness arises, everything you no know, comes into picture. Okay, so that's called real faith, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 431.14. Yata taror mula nisechanena tripyanti yatskanda bujo pashaka um, prano pahara cha yateendriyanam yateendriyanam um, tataiva sarvar hana machitejya. So yata taror mula, just like yata means just like taror means tree, mula means mool means the root. No, yata taror mula. Nisechanena means the process of watering. So when we do the watering of the root of a tree, what happens? Tripyanti. No satisfaction comes. Where all satisfaction comes? Tat skanda. No, the tree's skanda means or the tree's uh, trunk and buja. So the buja means the uh, branches and upashaka. So the sub branches everywhere. No, basically it goes to say that just by watering the root of the tree, the whole tree gets nourished, right? So, tripyanti. And uh, pranopahara yateyencha yateyendriyenam. So, by feeding uh, the, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, the stomach, no, pranopahara uh, cha yateyendriyenam. So, just in the same way as the tree was uh, um, like um, uh, getting nourishment by watering the root, in the same way, by supplying the food to the stomach, no, all the indriya, all the senses becomes satisfied. Tataiva, in the same way, sarvarhanam, no, all kinds of worship or all kinds of uh, process of worship, no, can be uh, attained by achuta ijya, means uh, worship of achuta, right? So, tataiva sarvarhanam achutejya. So, in this way, no, this is the uh, uh, shloka for uh, that example, watering the root of the tree. So all of us should memorize this shloka. No, yata taror mula nishechanina tripyanti tatskanda bujo pashaka prano pahara cha yateendriye nam tataiva sarvar hanamachutejya. Very, very simple shloka. No, very, uh, the first two lines talks about the tree and second, third line is talks about the, uh, this one uh, feeding the stomach. And the fourth line talks about how by performance of, uh, no, worship to the Supreme Lord Achyuta, all process of worship is done. No, there is no need to do anything else. Right? So let's read the translation. By giving water to the root of a tree, one satisfies its branches, twigs and leaves. Uh, and by supplying food to the stomach, one satisfies all the senses of the body. Similarly, by engaging in transcendental service of the Supreme Lord, one automatically satisfies all the demigods and all other living entities. Right? So everyone becomes satisfied just by satisfying the supreme lord so you now if we see the whole creation just a moment i'll just close this window okay so if we see that uh, um, if we are serving anyone of this world so the whole world or the whole creation is vasudeva sarvamiti sa mahatma sudurlaba so whole creation is nothing but the Lord and his energies. And um, if we try to serve one portion of the energy of the Lord, so then it is localized. You know, it is localized and it cannot satisfy everything. But if we you know, serve the Lord, it is just like watering the root. Everyone becomes satisfied by that. So that is the uh, very amazing aspect. And then we see that uh, watering the stomach, sorry, or uh, feeding the stomach, um, satisfy all the senses of the body. So in the same way, by offering worship to the Supreme Lord, it's as good as, you no, know, the Lord is as good as the, uh, this one, uh, you no, know, the stomach or the root of the, uh, this one, uh, of this entire creation. Uh, the Lord is the root of entire creation. That is why the sacrifice, the yajna performance, you no, know, it's quite scientific actually. So sometimes people may ask that uh, you are having a small yajna kunda, and in that, you are throwing some grains and things like that into it. And, you know, instead of that, you can feed some people. Like, you no, know, why are you wasting money in uh, pouring your ghee and uh, all your uh, 
yagya samagri into the uh, fire and you have just uh, made everything charred and you know what is the use of this you have just burnt everything right so like uh, why should you do this so then um, our question is um like you are seeing that uh, you have electricity coming to your home you have water coming to your home you have so many other uh, like uh, taxes that you need to uh, file and things like that so now what do you do you no know, previously at least nowadays this uh, you know all the things happen online but previously people used to take a piece of paper called check and they will throw some ink on it I mean, basically they will write the amount for paying this bill and they will uh, put it in a drop box somewhere in the uh, electricity eb office or water bwssb or somewhere so they'll go and uh, put the check over there and uh, and you no know, a small child may you no know, see that and say that you no know, papa kyun aisa kar raha hai like you no know, ye paper paper mein like you are just throwing some ink on the paper and then you are putting in the box so then the father what he will say like you no know, ha beta like you no know, this is this is how our electricity and water is coming and the child may not understand are paper mein thoda ink fek ke like you no know, dabbe mein dalne mein the so what is the use like how how is that uh, you no know, my electricity and water is you no know, getting continued because of this so that is the way you no know, less intelligent people they think that you know, when we put the ahuti into the yagya kunda you no know, yagya kunda is nothing but the mouth of vishnu and when we put ahuti in the mouth of vishnu so then the whole creation becomes satisfied you no know, that's that's how we can actually keep the sun moon electricity you know like all the natural resources on so if we don't do this egg you no know, then um, like how will the where are we paying for the sun where are we paying for the air that we are using where are we paying for the rain and water that we are using so many natural resources that we are using and exploiting every moment so we have not created it you no know, it's created by the lord and if we are using it we have to pay for it also any gentleman would ask for you no know, i've used this thing whom should i pay for right so it's not belonging to me i have used it so whom should i pay for right so that's a you know any gentleman would ask so it is a common sense devotional service to the lord is a common sense right so it's as common sense as we use the electricity and pay the bill as common sense as we use the water and pay the bill it's you no know, we use the cell phone and things like that we pay the bill right so in the same way you no know, this is this is like uh, you no know, offering sacrifice no it's very very essential same thing happened in, yeah like um, abhishekam or whatever it is it's yagya so any procedure like for a, for example our sacrifices we are doing the chanting of the names of the lord so this is a prescribed sacrifice for the for the sage and when we do this thing it's you know yagya or a sacrifice means the acts that are meant to please the lord and it may be a you no know, fire sacrifice it may be an abhishekam it may be chanting of the names of the lord it may be studying the scriptures it may be serving a vaishnava it may be like going to the holy places and serving the holy places so whatever may be the actions that are meant to please the supreme lord so those actions um, actually you know that's the way we are paying the bills for all the natural resources that we are using right so it's not uh, it's not that you no know, we are not caring about the whole world actually in fact you no know, sometimes people accuse the devotees saying that uh, so many things are happening in this world and you people are just like simply sitting in one place and doing hare krishna hare krishna no what's the use like no do something for this world no our answer is that no we are doing the greatest thing for this world by chanting no you people are not paying the bills we are paying the bills for everyone no all those people like who are getting everything in this world so we are the ones who are paying bills for them right so in that way we can see that this yagna sacrifice is very very important even if we want if we are selfish you no know, if we want ourselves to be like uh, nicely uh, maintained and things like that even in that case we have to request people please do yagna if you don't do yagna i'll get i'll not get water i'll not get you no know, proper uh, climate and things like that i'll not get proper natural resources mass of the people you know in this in a place if they are sinful so then the whole place will get affected because of that right so you no know, it is uh, Uh, the preaching the message of krishna consciousness and inducing people to perform yagna you no know, the chanting of the names of the lord in our case so sankirtan yagna so if inducing people to uh, do this yagna it is not only a selfless task it is also a selfish task 
no if they don't do then we will also have to suffer right so at least like uh, no, we will not take that angle for the uh, preaching sake no but I, at least like this angle is also there no i'm just uh, trying to uh, throw light on to that angle also right so we have to do selflessly the preaching activity so but then um, the uh, selfish angle is also there no if mass of the people are not performing yajna so not perform not chanting the names of the lord not um, worshiping the lord and things like that it's going to be sinful like it's the whole environment is going to be sinful if there is no worship of the lord immediately that means it is sin no because without yajna how will you get yajna shishta shinavasanta muchyante sarvatil vishay so without yajna there is no remnants of yajna there is no prashad so if there is no prashad then what exists is only sin right so that's the uh, whole point so yajna is a very very important activity no offering of food no all like all of us i hope that uh, all of us here are uh, preparing and first offering the bhoga to the lord and then only accepting as prashad so if not like no please uh, please do that so taking bhoga or you no know, cooking food for uh, oneself is not very good no yajna shishta shinoshanta muchyante sarva kil vishay bhunjante tve aham papa ye pachanti atma karana one who quick cooks for his own sense pleasure no a pachanti atma karana so atma karana only for my sense pleasure so then bunjante tve aham papam so he is eating only sins right so he is not eating uh, uh, food no that is nourishing to the body no it may externally nourish the body but it is like you no know, sowing the seeds of sins into the system and uh, he is going to suffer a lot because of that right and then just because he is performing sin it's going to create overall environmental changes also right so these people are working on um, global warming and uh, this thing that thing and all so actually if yajna is performed all global warming problem will be solved all climatic problems will be solved no but people will not listen to it people no they don't have such uh, intelligence to understand this basic simple things no it's a very common sense thing but people would not understand okay so um eating our sins is a shlokam from bhagavad gita ya ya yajna shishta shinoshanta muchyante sarva kil vishay bunjante tve aham papa ye pachanti atma karana pachanti means to cook uh, no and uh, in sanskrit no so like pachne ka means like digesting in the, in the, this one in, in hindi i suppose but then e pachanti pachanti means like cooking no e pachanti atma karana so like one who cooks for himself no basically like uh, not offering no to the lord is uh, is a sin no so okay so we will continue therefore after reading bhagavad gita one should promptly come to the conclusion of bhagavad gita one should give up all other engagements and adopt the service of the supreme lord krishna the personality of god if one is convinced of this philosophy of life that is faith no that's the beginning point adho shraddha so then after that comes the further stages of development of uh, krishna consciousness this is the first stage okay now the development of that faith is the process of krishna consciousness there are three divisions of krishna conscious men in the third class are those who have no faith even if there are even if they are officially engaged in devotional service they cannot achieve highest perfectional stage most probably they will slip after some time you know if the faith is not there simply they are at- attracted to the externals they will slip after some time you know so those people who will stay on in krishna consciousness is this this is the very important thing you know just now we read one should uh, uh, okay this is here it is there you know this aspect this is somebody who has this aspect in their life only they can you know stay on in krishna consciousness it is said that the faith is complete conviction that simply by serving the supreme lord shri krishna one can achieve all perfection no i don't need to go to any other demigods i don't need to no take shelter of any other process and things like that no sarva dharma an parityajya mam ekam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha shami masu cha hai right so like oh, exclusively taking shelter of krishna that's the beginning point of devotional service it's not the end no it's just the beginning right so and here we see the three divisions of krishna conscious men one who doesn't have faith so such people 
are externally engaged no externally they are attracted to some procedures and some rituals of krishna consciousness they may be doing it for some time but they don't have this faith that if i just do krishna conscious service service to krishna no everything else is taken care no that faith is not there then they will not last long they will slip off no proper rights here most probably they will slip after some time they may become engaged but because they haven't uh, they haven't complete conviction um, and faith it is very difficult for them to continue in krishna consciousness we have practical experience in discharging our missionary activities that some people come and apply themselves to krishna consciousness with some hidden motive and as soon as they are economically a little well situated they give up this process and take to their old ways of life uh, old ways again it is only by faith that one can advance in krishna consciousness as far as the development of faith is concerned one who is well versed in the literatures of devotion service and has attained the stage of firm faith is called first class person in krishna consciousness and in the second class are those who are not very advanced in understanding the devotional scriptures but who automatically have firm faith in krishna bhakti firm faith that krishna bhakti or service to krishna is the best course of best course and so in good faith have taken it up so now we see that uh, the first class he has the faith and he has the backing why he has that faith the scriptures say and he can quote and cite from the scriptures very very clearly so in that way like you no know, he's his his position is very strong that's the first class devotee and second class devotee is a person who has got sufficient faith but he cannot you no know, he cannot back his faith with a scriptural argument right so that's this is one way of classification there are many different ways of this uh, you no know, uh, like classifications are there this is one way of classification based on the faith on the scriptures and the basic faith on krishna so now the third class he doesn't have faith he is just externally engaged right okay thus they are superior to the third class the second class people are also they are superior to the third class because they have the genuine faith on krishna right so who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures nor good faith but by association and sim- simplicity are trying to follow so the third third class people they are just no they don't have faith and they don't have uh, uh, scriptural knowledge also they are just no just the asus because of association everybody is doing so let me also do somewhat they are going going on like that the third class person in krishna consciousness may fall down but when one is in the second class he does not fall down and for the first class person in krishna consciousness there is no chance of falling down and one is uh, one in the first class will surely make progress and achieve the result at the end right so the first class devotee it's all talking about not the perfected devotees no it's talking about still a sadhaka no still a progressing person and this we have to come to the first class basic minimum second class at least we should be and gradually we should come to the first class wherein no here proper this making the statement that there is no chance of falling down and such first class person will go on to achieve the no desired uh, end desired result right as far as the third class person in krishna consciousness is concerned although he has faith in uh, faith in the conviction that devotional service to krishna is very good he has not yet gained adequate knowledge of krishna through the scriptures like shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita sometimes these third class persons in krishna consciousness have some tendency towards karma yoga and jnana yoga and sometimes they are disturbed but as soon as the infection of karma yoga or jnana yoga is van- vanquished they become second class or first class persons in krishna consciousness that means they have to have exclusive faith on krishna no like i am doing krishna consciousness no what if uh, it's not sufficient no what if i need to back it up with some other yoga process also so then uh, there is contamination no proper calls it as infection here so such infection if it is cleared so then he becomes a second class person where he exclusively takes shelter of krishna okay um second class or first class person in krishna consciousness and faith in krishna is also divided into three stages and described in shrimad bhagavatam first class uh, attachment and uh, second class attachment and third class attachment are also explained in shrimad bhagavatam in the 11th canto those who have no faith even after hearing about krishna and the excellence of devotional service uh, who think that it is simply eulogy find the path very difficult 
even if they are supposedly engaged in devotional service. So this many times it happens that uh, people sometimes they take on to do devotional service, but then they say like, you know, what's the guarantee that we'll go back to Godhead and you know something like that is there and things like that and all. Let's be some somewhat good. You no, know? let's let's be somewhat good and let's do all these things. But I doubt really like uh, you no know, something like that is there. Or even if it is there, like no, the door ki baat hai. Like no, I I'll not be able to attain that and things like that. So that is. You know, then such people they will not make progress. So they need to have the uh, this one conviction that Krishna is there, and if I do this simple process of devotional service, that is chanting, eating only prasad, and doing uh, you no know, like uh, worship of the Lord, and following you no know, whatever thing I want to do, I'll follow as Krishna is telling, right? So in that way, like if I do, definitely Krishna will take me back to God at you no know, the end of the lifetime. Krishna is very, very merciful. No, He will definitely take me, right? So in this way, like uh, this, this kind of faith somebody has, so then he is going to make lot of progress. No, such such uh, consciousness is very, very good for making progress, because the endeavor. No, what are we going to do? It's Krishna who is going to take take us you no know, to the other side. No, like we are just going to do you no know, some simple things, and in fact, if we see eating only prasad. no we are saved from eating from so many eateries and so many things so we save money we save our health and then um, in association of devotees no even psychiatrically if we see that we are going to discuss about positive things we are going to discuss about uh, uh, bhagavad gita which is a positive book and we are going to discuss about krishna consciousness which is positive and we are saved from so much of negativity you no know, it's actually speaking krishna consciousness is not an austerity it's actually an opulence no even materially speaking it's an, it's an opulence so in every way it is an opulence right so these days people have made that uh, what is opulence you no know, to eat lavishly in where, wherever we want actually the stomach is crying you no know? so you are putting so much of uh, like what is that uh, feast kind of a food into the stomach and the stomach is actually crying and you no know, people think that oh this is enjoyment of life and the another enjoyment is burning the liver you no know, and uh, the lungs by the way of smoking and drinking you no know, that people consider to be enjoyment of this world right and then um, you no know, all the things which people call it as an enjoyment in this world if you carefully analyze it's actually putting the body into deep misery right so that's that's the thing which people call it as enjoyment but in krishna consciousness uh, sometimes people say like no who oh, you people have to give up so many things you people have to go through so much of austerities so one time a person he was like you no know, feeling pity about me he was telling all these things then i caught hold of him and told that no i feel pity for you like no you see like uh, you have to work so hard and then after that you have to eat like this and you have to get all this problems this and i gave a whole list of problems that he is going through and i told him, none of this i i have why why do you feel pity on me no you i should feel pity on you you are you are pathetic so then he, he was like startled actually so it is like uh, krishna consciousness is not a pitiable thing krishna consciousness is enjoyable thing this material people they will you no know, look at us saying that oh you poor person like you no know, because you are got into krishna consciousness you don't have any enjoyment you no know, you cannot eat in uh, hotels you cannot eat here you cannot go to films you cannot go you no know, do all these things you cannot watch a tv serial no as if something very wonderful is coming there it's like putting kam akro the loba moha madha matsarya all the things in one screen and making sure that we are going to hell and if we avoid that people say like no oh how sorry you are like no like you cannot enjoy all these things it's like crazy actually so we should see that krishna conscious devotees are much better off no materially also they have so much more opulent position actually no so it's not that uh, you no know, we are losing anything we are actually gaining a lot both spiritually and materially right so hmm so how can we tackle these kind of people we should have thorough conviction and then you know take them on a ride so saying that no why do you feel pity on me like you know, i should feel pity on you right so you no know, you are uh, you are going to help so <laughs> no basically okay we we'll have to see the situation and things like that you no know, based on that we have to react but at least we should have this conviction that uh, you no know, people apart from krishna consciousness they are you know actually suffering they are going to hell 
they are just booking their ticket to hell and waiting to go to hell so we are safe right and we are trying to save them you know we should not allow them to feel pity on us so that's like a crazy thing right okay theek hai so now uh, for them there is very little hope of gaining perfection the third class devotees thus faith is very important in discharge of devotional service the whole transaction is happening on the strength of faith you no know, what is going to increase in our krishna consciousness day by day it's the faith that krishna is there it's the faith that krishna will protect me at any situation you no know, there is the six lakshanas of uh, surrender is there anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam rakshayisi iti vishwaso at no gopatritva varanam tata atmanikshep karpanya sadvita sharanagata so anukulyasya sankalpa whatever is favorable for krishna consciousness i will accept pratikulyasya varjanam no whatever is pratikul for whatever is not favorable for uh, krishna consciousness i will reject it and then um, no rakshayisi iti vishwaso krishna will protect me in deepest of dangers there is no danger in this world where krishna cannot protect me no so raksha isiti vishwaso so he will no he will protect me in any situation and gopatrutta varnam tata he is my maintainer no so in this case no one example i always uh, cherish is when sita devi was kidnapped by ravana and uh, when hanuman told that uh, like hanuman went to lanka and then he told that no oh mother like please sit on me like i will take you no i will take you back to lord ram no who are these people like who are putting you in this kind of trouble so then sita devi told no no if i have to be saved i have to be saved by lord ram only right so this is um this is a very very a nice this one we can meditate upon that no maintenance no i am maintained by the lord no probably like some i am working somewhere and i am getting some salary and things like that but even that is given by the lord no lord is my maintainer and i don't want to take any maintenance from anyone else right so like exclusively taking shelter of the lord you know gopatrutvaranam tata and then uh, atmanikshepa and karpanya you no know, offering full offering everything in one's position in service of the lord and then maintaining a mood of humility you no know? these are all you no know, lakshanas of surrender unto the lord so now we see that uh, you no know, this is very very nice and important aspect that we need to have this faith that krishna will protect me in any situation and krishna will maintain me in any situation i am his part and parcel how he will leave me just like that you no know, he is going to maintain me he is going to protect me and he's been doing that since so long you no know, i have not been able to recognize and acknowledge he has been doing right so if we want to know how krishna reciprocates we need to purify our heart you no know, without purification of heart no we are not going to see the reciprocations of the lord but lord is busy reciprocating to us all the time right so but we are not able to see because of our you no know, clouded vision right so we should not dictate the lord saying that i want you to reciprocate in this way and you are not doing it so that's not the right way we have to busy engage in purifying our senses and we will see how the lord is reciprocating and how we will see how lord has always been reciprocating and we will see how he is the one who is staying just next to me he is the most closest person where nobody was there with me he has always been there with me so all these things we will understand you know if we like perfect our process of krishna consciousness okay text 4 maya tatam idam sarvam jagat abhyakta murti na matstani sarva bhutani na chaham te shvavastita so maya tatam idam sarvam jagat abhyakta murti na so i am there everywhere no like uh, in this whole material manifestation matstani sarva bhutani na ham na chaham na chaham te shvavastita so he is telling that uh, by me in my unmanifested form this entire universe is pervaded all beings are in me but i am not in them right so he is a superset no everything is in the superset but the superset is not there in the subset right so that's the uh, understanding here and purport the supreme personality of god it is not perceivable through the gross material senses it is said atah shri krishna namaadi na bhavet grahyam indriyai so we cannot na bhavet it is not possible no what is not possible um, no shri krishna namaadi so shri krishna nama roopa guna leela chari you no know, all these things you no know, name form qualities and aspects different aspects of the lord is nabhavet 
no grahyam we cannot understand it no by indriya by our blunt material senses we cannot understand but how do we understand then save on mukohi jeevado we have to render service to the lord and lord will reveal it to us swayam eva spurat yada swayam eva no this devotional service or understanding of krishna or krishna consciousness has to come swayam eva no the devotional service is independent i cannot say today i have chanted maybe 64 rounds and uh, no i should get spiritual realization no krishna reserves the right he says no i cannot <laughs> so no we have to please him seva on mukohi no it is only by the medium of seva no we can win the heart of the lord and lord should feel that oh this person this devotee is doing so much service to me i'll give him some spiritual realization let him have some krishna consciousness no swayam eva spuratyada it has to come through that way it's not that no i do this uh, i do this study of scriptures or i do my chanting or i do some no uh, like aarati to the lord and at the end of the day i'll be having so much spiritual realizations no no we may not we may or may not if the mood is right if it is done as a seva and thinking that how the lord will be pleased by the seva and begging that please give me some realizations no please give me some realization how you are just there right next to me and how you are always taking care of me how you are always there no for me no give me some realizations about it and we should pray like this and we should render very very humble service and then swayam eva spuratyada it's only possible by revelation and not by forcibly right so the supreme personality of god is not perceive, perceivable through the gross material senses right so lord krishna's name fame pastimes etc cannot be understood by material senses only to one who is engaged in pure devotional service under proper guidance is he revealed right and then here also we see that sevon mukohi jeevado so just like how shri krishna naam aadi shri krishna naam aadi means name form qualities pastimes and all those things which are no it's a list a list wherever adi comes it is the first element of the list and the whole list is just added just by you no know, uh, mentioning the first element in the same way sevon mukohi jeevado right so and the first element is the most important element and here you no know, all our senses are there and the representative of all our senses is jeeva you no know, that is the um, the tongue you no know? by tongue we can vibrate the holy name and by tongue we can actually you no know, taste the prasadam of the lord right so these two things we can do and also glorify the lord so seva on mukohi jeevado so practically every one of us should uh, chant the names of the lord and speak the glories of the lord and that's called preaching right so we should do that so that is that is how we will be able to get swayam eva spuratyada now we will be able to understand the lord and here proper is adding a little more this one only to one who is engaged in pure devotion service under proper guidance is the lord revealed right so it is also very important we need to have proper guidance in our krishna consciousness in the brahma samhita 538 it is stated preman jana churita bhakti vilochanena santah sadaiva hridayeshu vilokayanti so preman jana means like uh, anjan means like it's some uh, kind of an ointment no that is uh, put on the ice no uh, anjan so premanjan uh, premanjan churita bhakti vilochanena so when a person's eyes are decorated with love for god no then such a person is called sant and such sant no what will happen to him sadaiva hridayesh vilokayanti he will see the lord sadaiva he will see the lord all the time right so that's the this one so that's what brahma is telling in his brahma samhita premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena santa sadaiva hridayesh vilokayanti yam sham sundaram achintya guna swarupam govindam adi purusham tamaham bajami right so one can see the supreme personality of god at govinda always within himself and outside himself if one has developed the transcendental loving attitude towards him thus for people in general he is not visible he, here it is said that although he is all pervading everywhere present he is not conceivable by the material senses this is indicated here by the word avyakta murtina avyakta vyakta means like you no know, to see to perceive right so avyakta murtina 
means like avyakta means like uh, you no know, unmanifest you no know, he is not in the vyakti roopa in front of us so avyakta murti no so but actually although we cannot see him everything is resting in him as we have discussed in the seventh chapter so this again uh, this is a very very important philosophical uh, the shlokas these two are 7.4 and 7.5 so here again so many times proper refers to this shloka so i hope uh, devotees have memorized that bhumi rapo analo vayo kammano buddhi revacha ahankara mitiyam me bhinna prakriti rashtada no and then aparyeya mitasmanyam prakritim vidine param jeeva bhuta mahabaho edam dharyate jagat right so these two are very very important shlokas you know which says now as discussed in the seventh chapter the entire material cosmic manifestation is only a combination of its two different energies superior that is the spirit soul up no prakritim vidine param and then uh, that is the spiritual energy and the inferior energy apariyam tasvanyam apara no prakriti so the inferior energy or material energy so these are the two energies that is the sum and substance of the entire creation you no know? so the lord is there and his energies are there that's the entire creation right so just as uh, the sunshine is spread all over the universe the energy of the lord is spread all over the creation and everything is resting in that energy right so that's why he's called as param dhama right yet one should not conclude that because he is spread all over he has lost his personal existence so this is how the mayavadis actually say that you know they will take a paper and you tear the paper into small small pieces and throw it everywhere where is the paper now no oh, paper is gone no it's all become pieces so they say like no yes the brahman has expanded everywhere and the brahman is like you no know, there is no personality or there is no one entity now so that's kind of ridiculous actually you now they want to you no know, uh, like equal the material paper to the supreme lord brahman you know so the lord is like uh, ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णश पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवाशिष्यते राइट सो वी सी दैट नो द मेनी मेनी कंप्लीट यूनिट्स कैन कम आउट ऑफ द लॉर्ड बट ही विल स्टिल रिमाइंड द सेम कंप्लीट देयर इज नो डिटोरिएशन इन हिज पर्सनालिटी ही इज ऑलवेज द सेम लॉर्ड राइट सो दैट्स द अंडरस्टैंडिंग टू रिफ्यूट सच एन आर्ग्युमेंट द लॉर्ड सेस आई एम एवरीवेयर एंड एवरीथिंग इज इन मी बट स्टिल आई एम अलूफ नो still like no i am i as a person i exist separately for example a king heads a government but uh, no which is but the manifestation of king's energy the different governmental departments are nothing but the energies of the king and each department is resting on king's power but still one cannot expect king to be present in every department personally that is a crude example similarly all manifestations that we see and uh, everything that exists both in this material world and in spiritual world are resting on the energy of the supreme personality of god it the creation takes place by the diffusion of his different energies and as stated in the bhagavad gita vishtabhyaham idam krishtam uh, like uh, he is everywhere present by his personal representation the diffusion of his different energies right so he is present everywhere by his energies okay text 5 क्रिएशन so the lord is clearly saying he is not the part of the creation and he is the source of the creation right and then uh, he is the uh, no yet everything is created does not rest in me means here previously he told everything is resting in him in the avyakta murti na right so but then in his personal form you see like no i am just there i am i am just alone and you know like uh, the whole world is running the world is not resting on me so that's also there no it's everything that doesn't rest on me behold my mystic opulence you see like i am maintaining everything holding everything and still not holding everything now this is like <laughs> no really very amazing although i am the maintainer of all living entities and although i am everywhere i am not part of this cosmic manifestation no i am not part of it and i can just come in and go it's just like 
no uh, the prime minister can come into the prison and says like no i can go anywhere in this prison i'm not part of this prison right so because he's he, he just comes inside and he it's it's one of his uh, energies the prison is one of the energies of the prime minister he can just come in and go out you know he doesn't uh, get affected by it no and for myself this is source of the creation the lord says that everything is resting on him matsthani sarvabhutani no that's the previous this one this should be this should not be misunderstood the lord is not directly concerned with the maintenance and sustenance of this material manifestation sometimes we see a picture of atlas no i hope all of you would have seen the picture of atlas atlas is a old man carrying a globe no uh, so uh, a picture of atlas holding the globe on his shoulders he seems to be very tired holding this great earthly planet right so that's the picture of god atlas is a picture of god actually basically so no that that's that's how they conceived of god at that point in time right so he seemed to be very tired holding this great earthly planet so such an image should not be entertained in connection with krishna's upholding this created universe he just does that as a play he just does it like you no know, very very aram se right he says that although everything is resting on him he is aloof the planetary systems are floating in the space and this space is the energy of the supreme lord but he is different from space he is differently situated therefore the lord says although they are situated on my inconceivable energy as a supreme personality of god i am aloof from them this is the inconceivable opulence of the lord in the nirukti vedic dictionary it is said yujjat uh, yujjate yujjathenga durgha teshu uh, karyeshu the supreme lord is performing inconceivably wonderful pastimes displaying his energies right his person is full of different potent energies parash shakti vividai vashuvate and his determination is itself actual fact you no know, just he, he wants to do something his energies will immediately work out swabhaviki jnana bala kriya cha it just happens just based on his will that's all in this way the personality of god is to be understood we may think of doing something but there are so many impediments and sometimes it is not possible to do as we like but when krishna wants to do something simply by his willing everything is performed swabhaviki no jnana bala kriya cha so perfectly that one cannot imagine how it is being done the lord explains this fact although he is the maintainer and sustainer of the entire material manifestation he does not touch this material manifestation simply by his supreme will everything is created everything is sustained everything is maintained and everything is annihilated also right there is no difference between his mind and himself and as there is a difference between ourselves and our present material mind so there is no difference like that because he is absolute spirit simultaneously the lord is present in everything yet the common man cannot understand how he is also present personally he is different from the material manifestation yet everything is resting on him this is explained here as yoga maishwaram so the mystic power of the supreme personality of god it okay so we'll just see text 6 seems to be a little bigger one okay we'll try to read na yata akasha stito nityam vayu sarvatra go mahan tata sarvani bhutani matstani ti upadharaya understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests always in the sky all created beings rest in me right so like the wind is resting on the sky in the same way all created beings are resting on him for the ordinary person it is almost inconceivable how the huge material creation is resting in him but the lord is giving an example which may help us to understand the sky may be the biggest manifestation we can conceive and in the in that sky the wind or air is the biggest manifestation in the cosmic world the movement of the air influences the movements of everything but although the wind is great it is still situated within the sky the wind is not beyond the sky similarly all wonderful cosmic manifestations are existing by the supreme will of god and all of them are subordinate to that supreme will as we generally say not a blade of grass moves without the will of the supreme personality of god it thus everything is moving under his will by his will everything is being created everything is being maintained and everything is being annihilated 
still he is aloof from everything as the sky is always aloof from the activities of the wind perfect example actually in the upanishads it is stated yad uh, bisha vata pavate it is out of fear of the supreme lord the wind is blowing taitre upanishad 281 in the brahad aranyaka upanishad it is uh, stated etasya uh, va aksharasya prashasane gari surya chandramasu vidrutho vidrutho tishtata 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 etasya va aksharasya aksharasya prashasane gargi dvav ap apriti vyo vidrutho tishtata so by the supreme order under the superintendence of the supreme personality of god it the moon the sun the great uh, the other great planets are moving and in the brahma samhita uh, 552 uh, also it is stated yat chakshu resha savita sakala graha nam raja samasta sura murti rasesha teja yasya gnaya brahmati samrata kala chakro govindam adi purusham tamaham bijami this is a description of the movement of the sun no yat chakshu uh, chakshu means like eyes no yat chakshu resha savita no savita is the sun no yat chakshu resha savita sakala graha nam so savita or the sun is the uh, like uh, raja samasta suramurte like no of all the planets no the sun is the king of all the planets and that's the eyes of the lord and then how does it function yasya agnaya by the order no agnya means order yasya agnaya like who's agnya govinda madi purusham no by the order of the supreme lord govinda bramati no it is roaming around samrata kala chakra and it is maintaining the kala chakra right so it's all just happening by the will of the lord this is a description of the movement of the sun it is said that the sun is considered to be one of the eyes of the supreme lord and that it has immense pot- uh, potency to diffuse heat and light still it is moving in its prescribed orbit by the order of the supreme will of govinda uh, so from the vedic literature we can find evidence that this material manifestation which appears to us to be very wonderful and great is under complete control of the supreme personality of god it this will be further explained in the later verses of this chapter okay so thank you all very much for joining so we will close the session now um uh, so like it's uh, ninth chapter and 10th chapter is the crux of bhagavad gita and it's going to be like you know really amazing so the most confidential knowledge of uh, of the bhagavad gita so let's try to understand these two chapters very very nicely hare krishna shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai no prabhupad book marathon ki jai hare krishna